Hi, I'm Sophie from Wholesome Houseplants and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I use glass for both closed terrariums and open terrariums. Firstly, I'm going to show you a couple of different types of plants that are very easy and that like it in a closed glass terrarium. I'm then going to show you the different layers I use to build the terrariums and then I'm going to give you a tour of my terrariums. The first plant I'm going to show you to put inside a terrarium is a Fetonia. This specifically is a Fetonia albivenis. So it's that very simple green and white colouring. I also have some cuttings that I've taken of other different types of Fetonias. So this really vivid pink and green one is called a Fetonia mosaic skeleton. And they're all rooted cuttings. And then we also have a light pink one. And this is a Fetonia uh, forest flame. So, these plants are really easy to take cuttings of. They have very distinct nodes. I'll show you up close. But you just need to make a cut, put it in water, and you'll have roots in no time. I'd actually say that it's better to take a cutting of a small plant rather than buy a small plant, because this way it's even thinner to get down the hole of whatever vase or bottle or whatever you're using as a terrarium. Another plant that's really good for terrariums is a hypoestes or a polka dot plant and these come in different colours. This is like a really quite deep pinky red colour. It's beautiful. These are really similar to Fetonias in that they thrive in contained humidity. So another really easy plant. Another plant that I put inside my terrariums are begonias. Um, this particular one I think is a begonia rex fairy. But you can experiment with any type of begonia really. They, they do like humidity. I've got I think I'd say three or four different types of begonias in glass bottles at the moment. And then the last plant recommendation is a Macodis petola. So um, this is a species of jewel orchid and it has beautiful electric veining and this type of plant enjoys high humidity as well. I'm going to show you how I build the terrarium with those different layers and what you're going to need. So my plan is to turn this bottle that used to have olive oil in, into a terrarium. For the very base layer, you will need rocks. This is aquarium gravel and I, you have to make sure that you rinse it off as well because it comes with a lot of dirt around it, so make sure it's clean. You're going to need some activated charcoal some perlite and some houseplant soil. If possible, you're also going to need some terrarium mesh which fits your container. First step is to put some gravel mixed with activated charcoal into here. I'm using a latte spoon for this as well. Okay, we have our rock and charcoal layer in. So the next step is you're gonna to wanna to put your terrarium mesh in to the bottom and terrarium tweezers can help with that. You just want to try and angle it as best as you can and then the weight of the soil will flatten it out more. So next step is to add the soil which I've mixed up with perlite and I'm going to pour it in again with a teaspoon. So 
so there we have our soil in and now we just need to try and level that out and make a little hole for the next plant to go in I've just removed enough of the soil so that it'll fit down the hole easily so well she says we'll see Don't be afraid about the leaves, you just push them in and they're in. And then we'll style it with tweezers. So that's dropped in there, we haven't planted it properly yet. I'm also going to put in a second plant, which is this Fitonia mosaic skeleton. And it's rooted as well. So now all I need to do is try and just sort of pince the plant and just level it out a bit. There we go. There's a little bit of space left, so I'm gonna put in this Fitonia Forest Flame as well. And then again, try and angle it better. Then the last step is just to water the terrarium and I use a spray bottle because it has quite a vicious spritz which will help clean the edge of the bottle. So I just angle it to the side. And then now you've watered it, the final step is to seal it with a stopper. And that's how I'd make a terrarium. Finally, I'm going to give you a tour of all these different terrariums. So I've got everything from Fitonias to Ficus Velosas to Raphidophora Cryptanthas in here. This is my oldest Fitonia terrarium contraption. When I first put it in, it was, you know, smaller than this one. And over the last year and a half, it's grown to nearly fill the entire bowl. So this is interesting because it actually isn't a sealed terrarium, it's an open one. And I have, as you can see, <laughs> drilled holes in the bottom of this plastic. So, it seeps through. I got these four miniature bottles for two pounds from a charity shop. So I thought I would just try and put different types of Fetonias in them. And I think they're really sweet and they, they look fantastic. Obviously some are more outgrown than others. My plan really for like long term is to just open the stopper and just trim it as I would prune you know something that isn't contained in glass and then I'll just turn that into cuttings and then plant another one so I don't think it's a big deal if you know it does outgrow I know a lot of people are concerned about that you can see the root system and the rocks there same here this is another charity shop purchase it's quite big I got this big glass jug for about three pounds from a charity shop and it's a completely sealed terrarium is what I've turned it into. And I planted this probably about eight months ago. And yeah, it's grown really well and not too fast in a good way. The Fetonias obviously, as they overtake everything, are doing, are thriving the most, but there are a couple of other interesting things in here. That's a watermelon peperomia. I don't know if you can see that and this is a begonia fairy wing i believe this brown dead leaves is from um we had a really hot spell in england recently and it sun scorched the leaves and they got stuck to the jar as they're dying so that doesn't look great <laughs> um but you can see can you see there 
new leaves are growing and also so there's the Fetonia and that is a Peperomia Napoli Nights it's very hard to film inside this glass so this is Fetonias, Peperomias and Begonias in this one another giant Fetonia uh, that's not sealed purely because I lost the lid but I'm pretty sure this was a Schlur drinks bottle <laughs> so you can turn anything into a glass terrarium and you know that look at the size of that Fetonia leaf that's massive and it seemed really happy in here. It's quite condensed, obviously. When it grows, pushes through a little bit, I'll be able to stick my long scissors down and do a little bit of a trim. This was once an olive oil bottle and now it is a Raffidophora high shingling bottle. It's quite hard to see again because of the condensation, but can you see that? Yeah. Basically, these, these are very humid loving plants and I thought it'd be quite nice in a bottle and then I wouldn't have to do anything. And then again, as it grows up, because um, they're shinglers, hopefully I'll just be able to pull it out when it needs a, a bigger one. This I think is the ultimate budget version. If you have a Fetonia and you just want to put it in a pot within a glass mason jar, just to try it out, this is a jam jar and you don't want to do all of the layers, then just do that. Why not? They like it. This is another Rafter for a height, but this has got an easy lid to open, so I thought I'd show you inside it. I made this moss netting pole sort of thing and attached the plant to it, and it's, it seems really happy in this humid environment and it's got lots of growth. It was probably about down to there last time and then I had to tie on that new addition. This is my Ficus Velosa terrarium that is doing so well and amazingly it has adhered to the branch that I put in there. It's quite distorted from this far away um, but the first video I ever did on this channel was building this so I will link that down below. This is my Raftophora cryptantha which is on moss and in bark. There's two plants in here and this is a glass vase, and this is an upside down turned Yankee candle. <laughs> and I think it makes the perfect terrarium. This is one of my eight jewel orchid houses. And for this, I just lay a layer of pebbles down and then I can water that a little bit to keep the humidity up and keep the plants in moss and then take them out to water them. And there is a hole here, you can see. So it just keeps the humidity a little bit higher, but it's not a sealed terrarium. Lastly, we have a begonia terrarium. This is a upcycled water dispenser and it has a begonia bipinnatifida, an unknown shingling begonia species and a begonia black fang in it as well. And these are still in their pots and then this is in a bed of moss. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's inspired you to create something with glass. If you do, please do tag me on Instagram. It's at Wholesome Houseplants. I'd love to see it. And also please do subscribe to this channel. It would mean a lot to me. And hopefully I will see you next time. Bye.